So I want to ask everybody a question. Are you losing your grip? And it's a legitimate question because it seems like all around us, you know, the handles that we've had on things we thought to be true, what we've known, all this, everything is just so up in the air that it's super easy right now to just completely have lost our, our handle even on reality. And so in bringing something, a word to you guys today, I want to just bring something to you in terms of a reminder about what it is to be a person of faith in the middle of a changing world. Um, so I want to look at 2 Samuel 23, 8 through 10, which is about David's mighty men. And it says, these are the names of the mighty men whom David had, and I'm going to do my best on this one, but it's something like Josheb Bashebeth, attack Kimonite. Um, chief of the captains, but they gave him a nickname, and wisely so. They called him Adino the Esnite because of 800 slain by him at one time. That's quite a lot of people to be slain by one guy. So he's one of the mighty men. He's the chief of the captains now. And even though he was incredible, we're not going to focus on him. We're going to focus on this next guy. Listen to this. This is the guy right under him. After him was Eleazar, whose name means God is helper. Eleazar, the son of Dodo, the Ahuite, one of the three mighty men with David, when they defied the Philistines who were gathered there to battle, and the men of Israel had withdrawn. The men of, so hold on. David and his mighty men are there, but the men of Israel have withdrawn, and these guys decide, after everybody else has quit, to go back and defy the Philistines. If you look at the parallel passage in 1 Chronicles, it's not as kind. It says, the people fled before the Philistines. So where they were supposed to be, the people of God going out there in courage and fighting the battles of the Lord, they gave up all hope and they ran for their lives and left just these three people standing here. And these three people had a decision to make. <clears throat> and the Bible tells us right here, after the men of Israel had withdrawn in verse 10, this guy particularly, Eleazar, it says in verse 10, he arose and struck the Philistines until his hand was weary and clung to the sword. The word in other places is froze to the sword. His hand froze to the sword. And the Lord brought about a great victory that day. And the people returned after him only to strip the slain. So here, I'm seeing in this a picture of kind of, of something that's happening spiritually in the church right now. Like I said, there's not a lot of handles on things. And there's a whole bunch of insanity and craziness going on. And people who had taken up the sword to fight have lost their grip. And instead of their hand freezing to the sword in that moment... They felt some weakness and the sword slipped from their hand or they threw it down and they just have given up and they, or they've even fled. They've run for their lives. And the people of God have become, the number of those who are holding on and holding on in faith in the middle of all this craziness have grown to be a small number. But look at what the Bible says. It says, he struck the Philistines until his hand was weary and clung to the sword. So weariness, it was not unique just to the people who ran away. Everybody was weary. Everybody was getting discouraged. Everybody was getting run down. But these individuals had a different response to weariness. So when all others had given in to fear, the mighty men won a great victory because God was their helper, which is what Eleazar's name means. You can't, for example, the first guy, you couldn't defeat 800 people by yourself unless God was helping you. But when God is, is helper, as I said before, we still experience weariness. But what do we do when we're weary? That's the question we have to answer. So a lot of believers, as I said, have, have experienced some discomfort. And they cast their swords aside and surrender, but not the mighty men. So when you're weary, what do you do? And you have to cling to your sword, cling to your sword. And the scripture tells us in Ephesians 6, 17, to take up the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. So you take up the Word of God, but how do you wield it? How do you wield the Word of God? Well, you wield it with the hands of prayer. And so your prayer hands, so to speak, have to get frozen to the sword of the Spirit. So I won't stop praying, and the thing that I'm praying is the Word of God. I'm bringing God's Word back to Him. I'm bringing His Word back to Him as a reminder of what He said, of what He's promised, and I'm not giving up hope. So I want to leave you with a passage this morning 
that has re- that was stirring in my heart. I used to have know a song that used these lyrics, uh, these words as lyrics from Psalm nine. And I want you to hear these words. And I want you, if you're you know, you're that person who's set down your sword, who's run away, who stopped fighting. I want you to pick it back up again, and I want you to hear the words of David. David's giving a testimony. In Psalm 9, verse 3, he said, when, he said, My enemies turn back. They stumble and perish before you. For you have maintained my just cause. You have sat on the throne judging righteously. You have rebuked the nations. You have destroyed the wicked. You have blotted out their name forever and ever. The enemy has come to an end in perpetual ruins. And you have uprooted their cities. The very memory of them has perished. David saw all this happen. But the Lord abides forever. He has established his throne in judgment. And he will judge the world in righteousness. He will execute judgment for the peoples with equity. So that's a living God doing a real work in actual reality in your life and in mine, in our nation, in the circumstances around us. And God brings an equitable judgment for the good of all the people. So don't stop praying. Pick up your sword and fight.